Hey, this is Ed with Slow Car Fix, and today I'm going to talk to you about what's next for my 55 Chevy project now that the body is off the frame. Okay, so I was away for a little bit, had a nice little vacation, and uh, all I thought about the whole entire time was this stupid car. Um, but I guess that's what I'm into. So I spent a bunch of time while I was supposed to be sitting on a beach or sitting by a pool or whatever it was, uh, researching and trying to decide what parts I'm going to use, trying to decide which way I'm going to go, saving some links for some parts that I'm going to buy, all those good things. Uh, I also decided on what I need to do next, which is uh, always the hard part on any project is what's next. For those of you that haven't seen this car before, I've been working on it for a couple of years. This is my 55 Chevy Bel Air. It is a Bel Air. It was a four-door. It's now a two-door. I can call it a two-door because it has two doors. Um, I haven't been doing it as quick as some people can do it. I've been really focusing on trying to do the best job I can. And, uh, and I've had to buy some new parts and finish some projects along the way. So anyways, here I am. Uh, I've got uh, two doors. I've got the body off the chassis, as of my last video. Uh, and now I'm gonna pivot my focus to, this, this is gonna seem very odd, but to getting the body back on the chassis. Uh, not today. So I was thinking about um, lining up my door gaps and all that stuff, and I can't really do that with the body off the car. Um, should I have done it before, uh, before I pulled the body? No, I couldn't really because I have to weld, part of the reason I was pulling the body off the frame was I want to weld the underside of the rockers and there's some things I need to do. Um, I spent a bunch of time getting the car strong enough to be able to pull it off the frame. Now that it's off the frame, I need to focus on doing the work that needs to be done to get it back on the frame. And then I can square up the door jams, uh, align the gaps, all those good things. So let's talk about what needs to be done while the body's off the frame. Uh, the one thing is, while I can lower it down with my jack pump and set it almost on the floor, uh, I need to take that opportunity to strip the roof. So that's one thing. Uh, I have a tow board repair to do. Right in here, you can see where I plasma cut that. Uh, I have to come up to about here and just replace that section. I'm not buying a new tow board, I'm just going to make a new piece that goes in there, a patch. Uh, and stitch it all up. I'm going to clean and prep and paint the firewall. It's probably just going to go a satin black for now. Um, uh, well, forever, because that's what I want under the hood is all satin black, even though the car is going to be a different color that I haven't told anyone yet. Well, I've told some people, just not YouTube. Uh, I need to strip all this crap off. Things like, uh, I think this is the linkage for the pedal. That can go because uh, I'm going with drive-by-wire, so I don't need that. Um, a lot of this crap here, I'm assuming this is the shifter rod or something. Uh, I'm not going to fill that hole just yet. It's not really of concern, but that's going to end up going. I don't know if I, have to, if I can run this steering column or if I have to change this column. I'm definitely going with the power steering kit. I've been looking at the ones at CPP, so I'll probably get one of them. Uh, I can't lose my e-brake because I, well, I need to leave the hardware so I can install a new e-brake e later, but I need to clean this all up, paint it, and have it sort of ready to go. The other thing that I need to do, this both sides have new rockers, but this side, it's open on the front. I need to get the pieces, well, I have the pieces. I need to make the pieces that go in here, go in here. Um, and as you can see, my, wa my walker, my rocker, and my inner rocker are not clamped or welded together. So that's one of the things I wanted to do while the body's off the chassis. I want to clamp them in and it's tacked in spots, but I need to clamp it all the way along and I need to uh, weld it all the way across. Uh, this side I think looks better than the other side. Uh, as I mentioned, like look at this gap here is super tight. It's actually overlapping here. Uh, and then back here it has to come back. So I have to play with all that, but I I had them pretty close uh, when I put the quarters on, or built the quarters, or whatever you want to say. But uh, then I've had them off, and anyways. They need, the doors also need an extensive amount of repair, but that's going to come at a later time. Uh, so you can see where I stitched on the 
lower quarter panel and I've just started playing with some of the metal to metal filler. Uh, I will be using direct to metal products. I've had a bunch of people say that I should epoxy this car first. Uh, I'm not doing that. I'm using direct to metal products. So I'm going to be using a metal to metal filler from Evercoat that goes on here. Uh, that's what this is. It's actually quite nice. Uh, and then after that, I'll be using uh, direct to metal uh, Evercoat Rage filler. And, uh, and then I will prime it and block and forever whatever, but I still have lots of metal work to do. Um, I ultimately have to pull the glass out. Man, this thing's got a lot of things. Okay, the elephant in the room, uh, this chassis. So I'm keeping the stock chassis because I don't have a million dollars to buy a roadster, roadster shop chassis, even though I really like them. Um, I'm going to uh, clean it all up, wire brush it, wire wheel it, flap disc it, whatever else I have to do, and I'm going to paint it with that, uh, uh, what is it called? DOM 16, Dominion Sure Seal paint. It is uh, this, this right here. I'm gonna paint it with this stuff, uh, front to back. Um, I'm still not quite sure what I'm doing for rear suspension yet. I've got two options that I'm narrowing it down and I haven't decided yet, um, just not sure. So I have to weigh out the pros and cons of cost, availability, and I have to keep in mind that what I want for this car, I'm not trying to make a race car. I'm just making something that's a good cruiser. Uh, I have to look, go over the frame from front to back and make sure there's nothing I need to fix. So far on a quick look, I haven't seen anything that I need to fix. Um, I did see some, it's, it's a seamed frame and I see that there's some stuff up there. Uh, so I might, kind of fix that up and just weld that up a little bit. Um, there's no rot, it's just crappy welds, I think from factory by the look of it. So I'm gonna weld that up a little bit. One thing I am gonna do is I am gonna put a brace in across, just either way, whatever I do for my suspension, I'm going to put a brace across uh, so it doesn't, the shocks don't go into the floor anymore, they go to a brace. Okay, now that I've elevated the situation, you can see this side, I used the end of the rocker because this was all solid and kept the factory uh, uh, mount, so that's good. I do need to clean all this up and just clean it up. Um, and then I'm gonna replace, I'm gonna make a new lip that goes across here, come up to here and probably across here somewhere, I'll, I'll do a patch. It'll probably be just flat. Uh, I'll patch it from the inside so I don't have to get into this brace too much, I think. Uh, I think that's what I'll do. Um, but it's nice to have this accessible from the outside. So, and then I can clean all this up and, and paint it and clean off any crustiness to make sure it's all solid. This was the only spot on the tow board uh, that's pretty rough. And I don't really want to replace the whole thing, so I'll just make something. Okay, the other thing that I need to do, if any of you have followed along, I had to rebuild this whole inside here and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is on the inside of here, uh, I have to clean up these welds on the inside. Seam seal, I'm gonna get paintable seam seal with a brush, brushable seam seal, I guess they call it, and brush all the way along this seam uh, from the new metal to the old metal. And then I'm either going to paint it with this stuff here, this DOM 16, or I'll spray in some uh, rubberized undercoat and coat the whole thing. I've had good success with that stuff in the past. So I need to do that the whole way along this, uh, both insides of both panels. And then I also need to uh, do my inner wheel well pieces that I bought. This is the shock mounts, the factory shock mounts are actually in decent shape in this car. Uh, I'm going to fill those holes. Um, and then I have to, uh, you know, this is a new one piece floor that I've welded in. Uh, I have to strip this section of floor here with all this undercoat and wire brush and clean and all that stuff. Um, so I can paint this all. So I can paint the whole thing. Um, then I have the spare tire hole cut out. Well, it's, yeah spare tire tub is out. So I need to make a piece that goes across there and fill that in. 
Uh, I have to do the same exact thing on the other side and then do the inner wheel houses. So there's a lot of work here. This is not a, uh, probably not a one shot video, um, but this is where the direction I'm going. And then as I mentioned, I have to weld all the inner rockers all the way across and then paint everything. Uh, so I'm just working on trying to get it so I can put the body back on the chassis. So this is going to be probably a couple weeks for the work. No big deal. Hmm. Okay, I like lists, so uh, I'm going to make a list. There's a lot of lists in a project. Uh, I'll have a list later for interior. I'll have a list for body work. I'll have a list for mechanical. I'll have a list for when I'm doing the engine swap and wiring and all that stuff. Um, so this is one of many lists, but I like lists because they're rewarding. As you strike things off, you feel like you actually did something when sometimes it doesn't look like you did much. To a lot of people, this car doesn't look any different than it did a couple of years ago, but I know that there's been several hundred hours for the work into it. Um, I had somebody comment on my Facebook, I kind of got a kick out of it, saying, uh, what do you mean you're going on vacation? And when are you, how are you gonna have your 55 done for spring? Spring of what year? <laughs> this is like a maybe 2024 it'll be done and it's uh, February 2023 right now, so. Okay, so list. Uh, to get body back on frame. So body on frame. Uh, so I want to do inner rocker, trunk floor. I want to do spare tire, rocker end. Wow. Tow board, hash. Good thing I'm the only one that has to read this. And seam seal, quarters, uh, firewall, clean and paint, uh, outer wheel wells, frame, frame, clean and paint. Frame brace. What else do you want me to do? So let's talk about something else here. Uh, this would absolutely be the perfect time to run all my brake lines, to do all my suspension, to do all my brakes, to do all that stuff. However, I'm not going to do that. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why. So. The number one reason why is cost. Uh, to lay out, I'm paying for all this myself, so to lay out all that cost in one, one shot, like uh, to do the front suspension, rear suspension, brake system, all that stuff, all in one shot, it's a big chunk to lay out, especially when I'm still working on the body of the car and I just bought a powertrain for it. So I don't wanna do all that right away. Um, the other reason is I'm gonna have this frame all nice and painted up and everything, and I still have to paint the car. So I'm likely gonna have to do touch-ups on the frame if I want the frame to stay looking nice, if I care that much. Um, I don't wanna put on all new suspension and all that stuff and then paint the car and have it all covered in paint. Um, so I'll probably do that later. The only thing is if I'm doing a massive change in the rear suspension, like say installing a four link, which is one of my considerations, uh, I will want to do that while the body's off the frame, but I haven't decided yet which way I'm going. Um, front suspension, I can do when the front clip is off the car or I can do it on, on the hoist with the front fenders on. It doesn't really matter, that's not a big deal. Uh, but what is a big deal is painting the cross member and painting all around the A-arms and stuff. Now, the A-arms, I can paint underneath them after I've removed them, but the cross member and stuff, I have to paint obviously before the engine sets in. Uh, so that's important. Um, so that's why I'm not doing suspension and brake lines right now. I know you see that on TV all the time in magazines where they do 
you know, they'll send the frame out to get sandblasted and powder coated, and then they run all the stainless brake lines, and then they do all the high-end suspension stuff and everything else. That's because they've already got their body straight. They're going to paint their whole body off the car and drop the thing on the chassis. I'm a little premature with that, uh, with pulling the body off, because I had to pull the body off out of necessity to do these things that I'm just making a list for. So that's my thoughts. That's my process, right or wrong. Uh, depending on what works for different folks, it's gonna, this is what's gonna work for me. And then what I'll do is later on, I'll do uh, the front suspension, you know, I'll buy all that stuff, and then I'll wait a little while, and then I'll buy all the, uh, um, say the power steering kit, that sort of thing. Uh, if you do it in little chunks, it's a little more manageable. It's kind of like a payment plan for your own project. Um, I've always said that these projects are way better to further ahead to buy one that somebody else has already done um, because this way that you're doing it will invariably always cost more. So what happens is you're doing basically doing a payment plan and instead of financing it through a bank and paying interest on it, the interest is your time, is, is the labor. Um, that's kind of the way I look at it. It makes sense to me that way. Um, but you're absolutely further ahead to buy one that somebody else has already taken the pain off. However, I enjoyed the project. I bought this car specifically as a four-door to convert to a two-door. That's what I was looking for, uh, just for something to do. So that's what I got. And my theory was, why wreck a good car, uh, take a good two-door car off the road that somebody might want restored original when I don't want it original, I want it totally different. So um, that's my rationale. Just on, the topic, just on the topic of project planning, you want to take it into small chunks, you know, manageable pieces. You want it to be something that's measurable, something that you can see, um, some progress you can see. That's why I do lists, right? It, it's, it's something that's specific, it's something that's measurable. You can uh, strike a thing off the list and feel that that's one notch one step, one uh, part that's complete, that gets you closer to your end goal of cruising in your car and doing whatever it is that you wanna do. So uh, that's why I do lists. Um, I've talked to you a little bit about what's next for my project. I've got a lot of work to do. There's, there's no two ways about it. It's a ridiculous amount of work. Um, but it keeps me out of trouble and uh, takes all my money <laughs> and that's okay that's okay because uh, in the end I end up with a car that I want something that's uh, I enjoy driving and something that I'll enjoy with uh, lots of road trips like some of my other cars so this uh, video took a turn for me I thought I was going to make a video starting to work on this and uh, it turned out that all I'm doing is talking uh, I guess this is the next steps for this project and this is where I'm heading with it. So stick with me. Uh, if you haven't checked out the other videos, check them out. I'm going to get working and uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.